If you're looking for a quadcopter in the 200 size frame, I suggest this one. This is a Diatone ET200 quadcopter. This has 1806 motors and 5045 propellers. Now I've been flying my, D, my uh, Diatone Blade 150 for a long time and I've really liked it. I felt like it was a solid flyer, uh, but after flying 250 size and going down to the 150 size, it just seems like they just don't have the speed. Well, that was the reason I built it, but I just missed the speed and the agility that the bigger ones offered on a larger size course. Now, in this neighborhood, the 150 does fine, and I feel like it's a lot safer flyer, and it's a lot of fun to fly. But on the flying field, we had a drone racing event, and the 150 got tromped, because it just didn't have any speed. So anyway, I, got, I started building this Diatone ET200 frame, and I wasn't real excited about the 1806 motors because of the 2300 kV versus the 3100 of the Blade 150. I forgot how awesome these motors really are. This thing has so much get up and go, and you'll see it here in a little bit in the video I have. I'm going to give you some up close video of how this actually turned out. Then I'm going to go through and show some build video, uh, build pictures I took of this while I was building it uh, to try to help you build one similar to it. Uh, the only thing that I did uh, that was kind of out of the norm or most people may not want to do is I hot glued this camera up here on the front onto the frame because the frame's so tall there's no way to actually attach it. Whoa, where are we going? There we go. No way to attach it to the uh, top part of the frame here because it's just too tall, so I didn't have any other good way to do it. And also angled it a little bit up, if you can tell at all. Uh, the other thing I did is I went ahead and I attached on a couple LED strips onto the rear arms for uh, FPV flying with my friends just so that they could uh, see the quadcopter a little better in their video. And I was also originally planning to put the... Um, video transmitter here on the bottom side and that's the way it is in the build pictures but after uh, messing with it a little bit I figured out that these propellers are actually going to spin in here real close and I wasn't going to have enough room to have my antenna back there without these propellers munching on it so I ended up moving the um, video transmitter up here on top this this little antenna here don't don't use this one it's it's not going to work as well as the ones with the longer um, longer uh, stands on it. This one, it, whenever it gets away from you, pointing like this, away from your goggles, you pretty much lose all the video. And if it sits like this, you know, if it sits like this facing you and your goggles can't see the uh, antenna, you pretty much lose all the video too. It, these are fun for testing and they're, I think they're pretty durable, but you really want the one that's a little bit longer. The other thing, I uh, ended up having to put the battery on the bottom. I got a piece of Velcro here to hold the battery in place and this Velcro strap to go around it just to hold it, in, hold it on. And it just slips right in here, if you can kind of see it, right through the, uh, between the bottom plate and the uh, power distribution board. So anyway, we'll get to some build pictures of this and I'll kind of explain how I built it and we'll get through uh, some of the open uh, pilot tuning parameters that I did and hopefully if you have one of these you can get a flying as well as I have mine. The first thing I did was go ahead and assemble the frame. I installed the power distribution board with the little red included spacers between the power distribution board and the carbon fiber so that it wouldn't short out. Then I took the 1806 DYS motors and I mounted them straight onto the arms and I make sure you use the uh, Loctite on there otherwise the screws will work themselves loose. But I put them on here and I didn't cut any of the wires because I want to get the wires cut just the right length. I'm using the RC Timer Mini 20 Amp uh, ESCs. They're opto, so they're not going to provide any power to the flight board. So the flight board is going to have to pull power from somewhere else. But I started off by desoldering all the uh, motor leads off of here because I'm going to solder the motor wires directly to these ESCs. Instead of cutting the motor wires really short, I went ahead and left them a little bit long and ran them up past the ESC and looped them back around. That way, I could have a little bit longer wires in case I wanted to reuse these motors somewhere else. Or if I messed up, I could actually cut them down and still have a little bit of wire left to play with. Then I soldered all the ESC wires to the power distribution board in the four different locations for the ESCs. I wanted to have LEDs on the back of my quad because I like to fly with my friends and I want them to be able to see my quadcopter in their uh, goggles and in their video. So I took the uh, LEDs here and I strapped them to the rear arms and I soldered them directly to the um, same points that the ESCs are connected to. In this build, I had enough space under the CC3D board to install my uh, battery voltage sensor on the bottom. It's connected down here to the power input leads where the battery will be connected directly. Next, I mounted the receiver on the underside of the upper plate, and I used the uh, little antenna holder that came with the CC3D. 
I had real good luck with RC Timer's camera setup, so I ordered another camera setup just like it. It's the El Elge or something. Anyway, I had to cut the wires down so they weren't so long because I don't want all the extra wire wrapped up around inside this frame. For this build, I'm using a FreeSky X. 4R SB instead of my normal D4R just because I wanted to try a different receiver because sometimes I try to buy the D4R and it's not in, in stock. Anyway, this is what the cable looked like. I basically pulled out the green cable and then ran my uh, servo lead just like, like it's shown here where it goes black, red, yellow inside in that order inside the servo lead. In this picture, I'm just showing how the uh, X4R SB is connected to the CC3D and how I mounted the uh, LT200 on the underside of the of the top plate that didn't actually end up working because there's not enough room to have an antenna sticking out that far so I actually moved it up to the top in the final build next I soldered on a little servo lead up here to the front to the 5 volt uh, output that way I can power my CC3D from that 5 volts instead of coming off the main board that also allows me to run a 4S without actually pumping 4S voltage through my th CC3D now it could probably handle it but it's guaranteed to work with 5 volts. The next thing I did was to go ahead and solder on the power wires coming in from the left and they're soldered onto those two main points where the uh, FreeSky battery sensor was soldered. Also at this point I soldered on the uh, top uh, camera power directly to the same input because the, the video input has a wide voltage uh, that's supported. So it can run off a 3S, 4S, 5S battery with no problem. So running it directly off the battery is, is not a bad thing to do. On the right hand side I have the 5 volt power connected into channel 5. Now it could also plug into channel 6. It doesn't matter because all the uh, positives and negatives inside these pins are all connected. So I just plugged it into channel 5 just because it was open. And I thought the end result with the top plate mounted on there came out pretty nice. I have the wires cut short enough that there's not a lot of slop inside the frame. And you really don't want much slop because you don't want those wires coming out. Now for the uh, ESC wires, I actually taped all those together. And you could see a little bit of the electrical tape inside some of the previous pictures. But I taped them together just so they wouldn't be uh, messy underneath the CC3D board and make it look worse than it really was. This screenshot isn't actually mine. But in this screenshot, the only things I changed from the default were the uh, PWM frequency damped. I put it to dampen light, and that's basically going to slow down your motors when you let off the throttle. And then I also changed the motor timing to high. This, this screenshot had it set at medium, but I set mine to high. And also, in the middle, the top it says Afro 12 amp. Actually, with RC timers, I chose the SN20A, and the firmware works perfectly. And you need to do this same setup on every one of your ESCs. So this is inside open pilot on the stabilization page. For the rate mode, I cranked it clear up to 520. People don't want to go up as high as I did on this one to 520 just because they start getting scared because it's going up to near the insane. But if you want to do fast rolls and fast flips, you have to get it up pretty high. And on my Blade 150, I had it set at 450. This one I actually have it set at 520. And I have uh, Expo set up inside my uh, Tyrannus so that way it's still a little bit less sensitive near the middle. And down below I have my uh, P and I settings for my roll pitch and yaw. This is the advanced tab and again here I'm just showing you the, the pitch uh, roll and yaw PIDs down here in the middle. I don't think I actually changed anything on the expert page. If anything on here is different than norm it's because I chose the blackout H330 model when uh, I finished my vehicle setup. And there's nothing really uh, even configurable on the altitude hold side because I don't have the GPS I guess. This receiver setup shows that all my channels are using S-Bus, and that's because I'm using an X4R instead of a D4R. If I was using a D4R, these types would all probably say uh, PPM or CPPM. But I do have my auto level set on, uh, what's that, channel 5. And that's just so I can flip the auto level on and off if I need to. Usually the only time I'm using auto level is if my goggles go black or I lose a signal or something like that. I flip the auto level on and hopefully it will land gracefully and not break anything. I did change around the flight mode switch settings a little bit because when I turn it on I want it to get uh, right in the rate mode without having to change it to channel 3. So basically down in the lower section I changed, uh, I switched around stabilized 1 and 3 around just so I'd still have the original modes just in a different order. On the arming settings tab I just set it to um, arm when I got yaw to the right and I also changed the timeout just to 20 seconds. I think the default's 30 which I just thought was a little long. 
And this is just the main vehicle page for a quadcopter. That's enough of the build pictures. Let's get this thing to fly in and show you what it can do. And before anybody criticizes me, these are my kids on the flying field. I was putting their lives at risk by flying around it so I can make awesome video for you. Enjoy it because my kids were a little scared. I know I'm gonna get hate mail for flying so close to my kids. Anyway, they're my kids, leave them alone. This is the ET200. This thing's awesome. I'll have a full parts list in the description if you're interested in building your own. Get the same parts, use the same tuning, you should have similar results to this. Anyway, questions about it, leave in the comments. As always, thanks for watching.